Hello YouTube, it is I, Banded Wendy, on Monday, 10, 10, 11. I'm doing a combo video. Uh, this is week 132 post-op and week 64 maintenance, which is actually last Monday, 10, 3. I had a couple other videos this week. I didn't want to kill the channel with a bunch of stuff. But uh, I do my best to keep all my weeks on my channel. They're important for me. So last week uh, on 10-3 was my monthly weigh-in, right? I've been living in this, uh, what I'm calling the LTMR, Lifetime Maintenance Range, uh, between 138 and 148 pounds, and really trying to focus on not what the number on the scale says, as long as it's within that range, but just living, you know, um, making the best food choices I can, um, keeping my exercise and fitness plan something that is a lifestyle, and being happy, you know, uh, and really seeking for and thinking about and creating what happens next in the world of Banded Wendy. Uh, so last week, uh, well, so my start weight, uh, 133 weeks ago last week with my pre-op liquid diet was 244.6 pounds. My goal was to lose 99 pounds to be 145.6. Met that goal in July 2010 and lived in that goal for nearly a year in maintenance when I decided I wanted to go a little bit further so I'd have that bounce room to help me not always focus on one specific number on the scale. So I met uh, my bounce room goal was to hit to 138 and I did that which put me in 107.6 pounds down uh, August 27, 2011. So and then I guess it was September something, I'm like, I'm gonna live in maintenance uh, and not focus on that number so much and just start reporting a monthly weigh-in because it's very important to have accountability. I take a picture of the scale every day. I do not fear the scale. So uh, on Monday of last week, I was 142.6. So three pounds exactly below my goal weight of 145.6 and a little bit up from my lowest goal weight of 138 um, and I felt good about it. Uh, wore my size 2 baggy jeans, my boyfriend cut jeans from the Gap that day and uh, I love waking up on a Monday and stepping on the scale and feeling good about that number and feeling good about how I look at my clothes and feeling good about what I have on track with my fitness and liking what I have planned to eat for my meals. I don't know that we can ask for much more, right? Um, I didn't have a fill last week. Uh, I was supposed to get one, I did not that week, 132nd week. Uh, scheduled the upper endoscopy, which I'll talk about, that got done. Took my first spinning class, extreme spinning class. Uh, you know, I, ride the, I rode the bike for my triathlon, bought myself a bike, and became a bicyclist or a cyclist and for me I live in downtown LA so I put the bike on the bike I put the bike rack on the car put the bike on the bike rack and commute someplace to go ride the bike and I don't want to take the rack on and off all the time so my husband got us memberships to the LA Athletic Club and they have extreme cycling class I'd never taken it before, and I was like, oh, okay, let's try it out, right? It's free. Uh, it's part of the membership. So I took an extreme cycling, my first spinning extreme cycling class, and it was a workout. Like, it definitely took, I was riding at 34 to 38 miles per hour for minutes on end. And they come around with a, a heat gauge, and they can shout you out, it's very competitive shout you out in the class how fast you're going. Um, so it's not just you knowing your own speed, it's everyone else knowing your speed. So that's pretty cool. Great calorie burn, sweat flying everywhere. So for me, it definitely took my fitness uh, 
up another level and it added something into my toolbox and it's good for cross training focusing on marathon running right now and I want to incorporate the swim and the bike uh, as my cross train days so I totally love the spinning class uh, gladiator which was the mud gladiator Pasadena Rose Bowl uh, rock and run and who and I did that together plus Three of my coworkers did that, and my coworker and I went the day before. We got to preview the course. We got to meet Dan Nitro Clark, one of the original gladiators from like 15 years ago on the TV show. And Carlson and I went and did it for the KTLA Channel 5 News at 4:30 in the morning. We were out there getting in icy water, crawling through mud, climbing up eight-foot walls, um, obstacle course. So it was a run and an obstacle course. Who and I, on Saturday, the following morning, did the 10K run with 17 obstacles. And uh, we were champions out there, gladiator goddesses. Uh, actually, it's pretty cool. I'll hold up one second. Um, you know, I, I always like to show my race bib from a race. You can see the mud on the bib, right? So there's that. We have these cool mohawk uh, things we put on our head. And it had a really cool medal, one of the coolest medals uh, yet. Check that out. Yeah. And by far the best race t-shirt also. So, and it was a small race t-shirt. Um, so, had a great time doing that and was actually quite sore. I don't know if it was the spinning class, the pre gladiator preview for KTLA Channel 5, or the race itself. Um, the Rose Bowl seats 100,000 people, so it's huge. The first obstacle course, first, uh, first obstacle on the course was Quads of the Gods. And we're talking, we must have did five or six up and downs of that Rose Bowl seating, stadium seating, and then all the way around to the 25-yard line and out. And that was just one, plus a 10K, a 6.22 plus mile run. So we had a lot of fun. So that was great last week. Um, with the with not having a fill, I was at 5.05 cc's in my band, so I had a fill, but it was a one cc decrease than, from what I've been living with since March. Um, not a single PB, not a single one, and I felt wide open. I could definitely eat more quantity of food. Um, there were no soft stops. Never got stuck. Um, because definitely portion control was more in my control than the bands. Um, non-scale victories, you know, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I got on the elevator one day last weekend and there were several guys in the elevator and one guy's like, where'd you get that body from? And I'm like, uh, a lot of running, P90X. I'm a triathlete, I like to swim, bike, yoga, a lot of hard work, and we're walking out of the elevator, and he looked at me, he's like, keep it that way, keep it that way, that struck a chord with me, keep it that way, it's kind of my theme, I think that's my new theme, keep it that way, that's my new motto, keep it that way, Wendy, keep it that way. Um, and at the Gladiator event, talking to a bunch of different people, uh, and you can, you can, you can spot a runner. I can spot a runner, um, usually from their, their legs, their calf muscles. And uh, a guy said to me, you're a runner? I am a runner! Yay! How did you know? I know how he knew, you know? So that was pretty cool. Uh, so, uh... Let's see. Yeah. So basically my next official weigh-in will be on November 7th. And I'm going to do monthly weigh-ins. And as I said before, if I go below 135 and above 148 and probably above 145.6, I'm coming on to make a video to call myself out to what the heck is going on, right? Um, so then this week... From ending on 10, 10, 10, week 133 post-op, week 65 maintenance, still weighing in within my uh, maintenance range, my lifetime maintenance range. 
Uh, today is my one year wedding anniversary and I weighed less today than I did a year ago, the day I got married. I did get a fill last Thursday, so I went back up. I'm at 5.80 cc's in my 10 cc band. So that's still 0.25 cc's less than where I was since March. Uh, on liquids, my doctor has a two week liquid uh, post fill, that's his rule. I'm probably going to get in about a week because I'm going on vacation. Uh, morning hunger is gone. I didn't like the fill level at 5.05 .05 for me. Morning hunger, I don't have time for it. So glad that's gone. Liquids for me are actually pretty easy. Um, there's been a few occasions where I've thought about food and there's been a few occasions where I had a peanut butter bliss bar. I was at a weight loss surgery, local weight loss surgery potluck and I had a bite of Matai 83's amazing meatballs because I've never had such delicious looking meatballs. Didn't work out for me actually, I did end up PBing those meatballs. Uh, I only had one bite of a meatball. Um, and uh, Lauren Taylor, 87, was in the car with me when it when I was like, ah, you know, and she's like, I think I've been here before. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, very few times that I've, you know, in five or six days, I've had food two times, three times that wasn't uh, liquid. Um, I'm still getting in uh, between 1,000 to 1,600 calories on liquid. That's not a problem for me. I get creative. And I've got anywhere from 90 to 120 grams of protein on liquids. That's also easy for me. I've been fighting a cold all week, but still getting in my workouts for the most part. Uh, Sunday, Rainish01, Hua, and Amy, SD Mom, and I ran. Uh, they closed down the streets in downtown LA three times a year for Cicla Via. And we ran 9.4 miles. Uh, we're all training, the three of us, plus... Bypass Joe. Uh, it'll be Bypass Joe and Amy SD Mom's first half marathon. Uh, and we're doing that here in downtown Los Angeles, the Rock and Roll LA on 1030. So that was a part of our training program. Uh, it was my longest run since the tri training. So my longest run since June. Um, and I still got it, you know. It was a long run. It felt good. I liked it. So that was great. Uh, then, after October, um, in mid-November, who and I start training and bypass Joe. And anybody else out there, you know who you are, I'm begging you, for the LA 26.2 full marathon in March. And during that, we're going to Vegas, and my husband's brother and his friends, and who has got a bunch of friends... Um, Jessica, intriguing ones meeting us there. We're all doing the Rock and Roll Las Vegas, and it's down the strip at night, uh, the first weekend of December. So I've got a couple half marathons coming up, so it's definitely marathon running mode. Um, what else? Non-scale victories. Today I wore a size 2 jean from the Gap that was a skinny legging jean. It was not the boyfriend cut. The boyfriend cut are a little bit baggier and more roomy, these were not. They were tight in there. Um, so that felt pretty great. And my wedding dress still fits. Uh, many of you commented on that video I made about my inspiration. I wore my wedding gown and you know I'm still elated about the fact that I'm married to my soulmate and my weight loss surgery hero and that I could get that wedding dress on without three women helping me get it on. It still fits. Um, with that said, you know, I've been watching a lot of videos, I'm lucky enough to have uh, some great contacts with you guys via my pocket and um, Facebook, you know, reading so many things and I just wanted to put out there my random thought for the day, you know, getting off track happens, life happens. It's about how far you get off track and how long you let yourself go off track without um, realizing it and stopping it, right? It happens to all of us. It's normal. Um, you can't beat yourself up about it. That's like negative criticism of yourself. And really, you got to change it mentally into constructive criticism that you're aware of what's going on and that you have the power 
to stop it and you have the power to change it. And, you know, I had a conversation with someone. They were afraid to step on the scale. No way, man. We had weight loss surgery to never fear the scale again, right? So don't be afraid of the scale. Maybe you're not a daily weigher, but you should at least stand on that scale once a week, right? That's my opinion. Um, and it only counts one time a week. It doesn't have to count every day, you know? One time a week, twice a month, depending on where you are in the journey. Um, don't be afraid of the scale. And then ask for support. Make a YouTube video. Reach out to a friend locally. Um, you know, hit, hit me up in my pocket and say, help. Call yourself out, you know. Make it the time right now to say, it's time. It's time for me to get this worked out um, and just get back to basics. You know, you cannot fail. That's what you have to believe. You have to believe you're in this journey to win it, no matter how long or how hard or how challenging or how many times you have to start over. You cannot fail, right? That's the mental mindset. You're going to win. Um, so you're strong and we're all strong. And we're going to get what we want because we're doing it. So just do it. Right? So that's my thoughts for the week. Thanks for watching. Appreciate all your support. See you next time.